Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm talking to Iowa here. I'm not going to show anything on screen, and this is probably just going to be me more just throwing ideas out, or at least where my thought process is. Now, clearly, I mean, also, we're going, you know, both Xfinity and Cup Series and stuff. Xfinity, just going to boil down to what do the Joe Gibbs drivers do? Are their teams going to be stupid? How is our guy going to throw away the race, and how does that impact, you know, what happens in this situation? But I mainly want to talk about the Cup Series and just speaking out loud. You know, clearly we have the repave configuration here at Iowa, which I just truly don't understand. Like, that's wild. That's insane. Especially with the issues that we've seen the next-gen cars have. Oh, the bottom was too bumpy. Can't, but, like, who, who cares? Like, you guys race on glass at Texas. Like, we also, sadly, no reconfiguration happening at Texas because the rationale is the amount of unpredictability and chaos that the current Texas provides is currently outweighing the price tag of a reconfiguration at Texas Motor Speedway. Um, so I am very sad by that um, decision by Texas. Um, but going back to Iowa and stuff, repaving the bottom. Like originally, you know, when you race at Iowa, you know, all lanes are very much viable, especially with everything wearing the exact same. If anything, you want to maintain mo momentum, especially in three and four on the outside lane. Now that both inside lanes have been repaved with a substantial difference in the grip that the inside lane is going to have on the outside. Now, you know, we could run into a situation which I don't see how it would happen that the inside lane is too slick um, due to all the oils in the paving process. But like, I just don't see that being the issue or I don't see that being an issue that we would run into. And so when you look at the bottom lane having more grip most likely being the dominant lane by de facto now that, you know, why would you run the outside lane and tear up your tires and stuff? Why would you run the outside lane where you have to drive harder? You're most likely not being able to carry much speed through the field or on the outside lane. You know, usually you jump on the outside to carry more momentum down. I just don't think that is going to be viable. Now, yet again, I'm making this on Thursday. We haven't seen all the Cup Series cars on the track, and this next, you know, this next-gen car is quite wonky compared to other generations of cars that we've seen on short tracks and stuff. And so, you know, a lot of unknowns uh, going to be answered in practice, going to be answered in qualifying and stuff. And that's mainly why it's like, oh, let's not, at least for me, you know, that's why this video is more so, let me just touch on ideas or, or topics or things that I would want to look at. Now, I haven't listened to anything yet um, from any other provider. I'll just do that later today and stuff. I've been busy this week. But, you know, Entering this race, we we you know we're most likely going to have like Hamlin, Truex, Larson, Byron, probably Reddick, um, you know Elliott, um, Wallace to an extent, um, probably the two RFK guys as like you know initial favorites, and then like Bell, people like Bell and, and stuff like that. But when I start looking at this schedule, and when I, when I start looking at when I approach Iowa Speedway. You know, my starting points would probably be, and this is just this is just research based. This isn't like, oh, this is the de facto what I'm using or whatever. But when I look at this track, like, and it's not due to the proximity to Gateway in the schedule, because a lot of people just like, oh, well, you know, we haven't been to a flat track in a while. We haven't been to a short track in a while. Well, like, yeah, but like, we, we also like break the series up. Like, we go, we open at Daytona, Atlanta. Then we go to some short tracks, and we have a month and a half of intermediates, and then we're like, you know, at Gateway, Iowa, whenever, you know, we go to Pocono or whatever this month. Um, and so when you, like, not even look at them in, in terms of being broken up, but when you look at them and how people are running and how people are um, racing and stuff, and you look at what the variables that we're chasing at Iowa are, you know, when I look at Iowa, I don't see anything on the outside looking in that I would – be using from Martinsville. I don't, outside of it being a short track, Richmond is, I would argue, completely different. Okay. Now, yet again, you can argue the same basis that I choose to use for like people like, or places like uh, Dover and Kansas. Like you would, you, you would, or you could argue that those two are drastically different. Okay. And so is the argument, those are two drastically different places or, and the people that are performing well at one track are doing well at the other track due to the similarities at the track or just due to the overarching idea that you set cars up differently or similarly or the teams are better at higher-paced racetracks, whatever the case may be. Um, 
so it very much might be the case to where, yeah, Richmond is a very much one-to-one or good comparison and a good preview for Iowa, okay? I'm not saying that that's not the issue or not, not saying that's not, that, that isn't the case. But when I look at Iowa, just on the outside looking in of, like, the amount of turn you need at Iowa, okay? Um, right off the top of my head, I'm assuming that you're probably entering uh, – Richmond's corners at like low 150s, 140s, like the the entry into three, entry into one. I'm guessing you're probably somewhere around in there. I know for a fact you're probably at like 165, uh, like mid 160s at Gateway. And we would expect that we're probably, actually, we might even be a bit lower at Richmond. We might be like in the 140s. Because um, if you're like 135 uh, midway, three quarters of the way down the straightaway, you're probably at like 142. 145, 140, and once you start backing off with tire wear, you're probably at like, you know, high 130s entering the corners at Richmond. Where at Iowa, you're most likely going to be entering the corner probably mid 150s. Okay, and so, you know, that might not seem huge, but me just thinking out loud of like, what you, what would you be pulling stuff from? More so from Richmond, which is a much slower racetrack in terms of the speed. And the lateral movement that your car is going to have in the corners versus someplace like Iowa that has, you know, yet again, you could argue that, you know, Richmond and Iowa are shaped similarly. But in terms of racing aspect, Iowa has very long sweeping corners. Okay. Whenever you enter the corners, like you're going to be, it, speaking next gen stuff specifically, um, with how these cars kind of sit down on all four corners and, you know, te- technically would, would rotate better than like a traditional stock car. Um, that doesn't have an independent rear suspension. So when you're looking at the long corners at Iowa and thinking of how to, you know, make the car rotate and carry speed through the corner, well, by the fact that we're going to the bottom lane because we're repaved, right? So like the bottom lane is going to be dominant. It's a real, most likely due to the grip there, we're not going to be absolutely pushing tight. You'll probably see drivers possibly downshifting, but I don't think you would want to do that. Um, but you're most likely entering the corner, getting on the brake, letting the car rotate very long in the corner, and then getting on the gas. Very late apex corners here, okay? And so my approach or my initial thing that I want to look at in practice or even what I want to do this week would be to see and be very curious on the people who performed well at Gateway. Now, yet again, faster corner, but or faster corner, very long, very long corners, very late apex get on the gas very late in the corners, and it's very dependent on just carrying speed through the corner. You know, when you're letting off the ca- when you're letting off the gas, you're not necessarily on the brake. You're just letting the car rotate through the corner. Like what teams were able to do that specifically well? You can combine that with the preview of a single file race or a track that has a lot of grip, um, which you know also like if you can carry speed through. Like carrying speed through a track that has low tire wear and high tire wear are two, dra- two drastically different things. You know, if it's low tire wear, that means you're gripped up, whatever, you can do anything. If it's the high tire wear, well, you're still going to be sliding through the corner. You're still going to be burn off speed. So, like, even looking at a North Wilkesboro for the All-Star Race and Penske, for an example, or Penske as the main example here, I think there's a real chance that Penske can show up here at Iowa this weekend. Yet again, it's not because, oh, they did well at Gateway. Oh, you know, when we look at the recency of what Penske has been doing, oh, the resurgence of Lagana, like that doesn't matter. You know, it matters of where um, these teams are in terms of being able to show speed here. Like, yet again, that's why I'm not using, or I wouldn't even be wasting time looking at Martinsville. There's nothing at Martinsville that you can use here at Iowa. They're drastically different tracks. Like, what are we even talking about here? And so you look at Phoenix, you look at Richmond. Even at Richmond, I'd be concerned about it. I'd probably want to focus more on Phoenix, and even still, Phoenix is much flatter. Like, then any th- both tracks are much flatter and are going to race differently than compared to Iowa. And so if I start looking at Iowa as its own independent race with a lot of unknowns, you know, it's yet again not trying to get different or something, but I would, I'm probably going to be looking at Gateway. And I'm going to use practice to determine if that's a good comp or just have a good idea of where we're at. And then combine that with the uh, importance of track position, excuse me, 
here at Iowa. Real real case to be made that it's going to be very difficult to pass at Iowa. It's going to be very much a silent pit lane. You know, 350 laps, we're probably going to have three to four lap leaders. If it, And that's where, like, oh, Richmond might be a thing to look at, not of who's fast, but of how the race transpires, how pit cycling happens. Yet again, I mean, we have green, we have green flag pit stops at Gateway as well. So, like, if anything, I would want to be looking at the – how those races played out from a fantasy aspect of where people were versus where they finished. Like, for example, you know, recently, I mean, certainly this year has been very volatile in DFS, but when you look at, um, like, the people starting up front, like McDowell started up front at um, Iowa, not Iowa, at Gateway, I think he finished, like, 24th. You know, when you look at, uh, situations last year where Briscoe started up front of Gateway, crashed out, ran into issues. When you look at a situation like maybe last year or the year before when Ryan Priest started on pole at, at Martinsville, spent on pit lane, was absolutely done. Um, in situations like that, you start seeing that, like, and, I mean, Cindric, where did Cindric start at Gateway? I just went blank. Um, you know, Cindric starts second, finishes second, or actually wins, rather, at, um, at Gateway, you know, whereas you have McDowell, I think we have two guys out of the top five run issues. Let me look. You had, yeah, we had McDowell finish 25th. We had Blaney finish 24th. Okay, well, that's because Blaney ran out of, ran out of uh, gas. But, like, Gateway, you know, Cindric starts second, finishes first. Bell starts fourth, finishes seventh. Reddick starts fifth, finishes fourth. Hamlin sixth, finishes second. Keselowski, seventh, finishes third. I mean, that's one, two, three, four, five out of the top 10 um, and more specifically out of like the true, like top five, top six, top three row starters and stuff like all those guys were big names outside of McDowell and Blaney who had, and yet again, Blaney ran out of issues, but like McDowell had not been in the conversation of expected, like where they should be at these tracks. And so, you know, speaking out loud and stuff, does, is it really even going to matter? Like, if we have Joe Gibbs guys, Larson guys, Larson, uh, Hendrick guys start up front, and Pitsky guys start up front, like, we're still playing those guys. Like, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, you know, or, like, once we get the starting grid. Like, if Truex is starting third, we're playing Truex. Not because, it doesn't matter if he was good at Richmond or Martinsville or some shit. He, like, he's starting third and stuff. Um, so, I think a lot of the maybe research at least and I, I don't think it's being lazy but I don't think it really matters for a place like Iowa for the for the next gen that we haven't been to uh, and even still this is a completely different track due to the repave you know and so let's at least for me I want to approach it by what do I see in practice what do I see in these guys starting wise and I probably want to be um, chasing guys up front that I believe can lead laps based on their pit road stalls and I'm much more open to chasing whatever potential chalk we might have in this race in terms of place differential in the back of the field and probably normal um, due to the fact that I want to just try and get lap leaders. And so I, I would probably actually um, prioritize the place differential or the value plays that are popping up due to projections come Sunday um, and build like that. I don't like, like that, you know, that, that's really my two cents of you know, this Iowa weekend. Um, I, I just think looking at Martinsville, including that date is useless. So you'd want to look at like Richmond and Phoenix, but even then Richmond, you're, 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 you're not even terminal velocity, but the, your highest speed entering the corners is like 10, 12, 15, maybe 16, if not more, uh, less miles per hour than what you're going to be entering the corners here at Iowa. And so, Yet again, the track that would probably show who's rotating better would be Gateway, you know? Like, you might be like, oh, you know, Gateway isn't a short track and stuff, but if you're doing, like, 164, 165, entering three at Gateway, and you're doing, like, you know, 156, entering one, entering, like, three at Iowa, like, that's that's much closer uh, than the, like, you know, mid-140s and stuff at Richmond, possibly, like, high-130s and stuff. Like, that's where I would want to go. That's what I would be, you know, just like, oh, you know, where what I would be focusing on where these cars are rotating and what teams are good at getting cars to rotate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so anyway, those are kind of just my thoughts on um, 
Iowa, that's not even necessarily even talking about or going through how the optimal lineups have been playing out at those short tracks. Yet again, that's going to be pretty much more important than an individual driver's expected performance at Iowa this weekend is what type of line of construction do we want? Do we expect to have three to four lap leaders or do we expect it to be a runaway? You know, um, we should have an idea of that from practice of how close people are, but even still, I don't think we're gonna have enough cars side by side to determine that. The thing that I would look at is if, if it is proven that middle top lane is like non-accessible, like it's just useless being there. Okay, well then I'm gonna prioritize like due to practice. Like if everybody's running the bottom, or if somebody hops up top, like if Larson's like, oh, okay guys, let me let me try the top side. Let me see if I can rotate the car on the outside and carry momentum. And then he's just like, guys, we're we're slower. Like the fucking lap time is slower than the bottom. You know, then it's for me, that's like gotta prioritize track position, gotta prioritize pit road, and you know, we probably won't have as many lap leaders unless it goes green and we start having guys flip-flop, you know, some guys run long, some guys run short and stuff. Then it's like, yeah, let's look at Richmond, but like if how Richmond played out in a fantasy aspect, not of who's fast at Richmond. That's just kind of, you know, that's where my head is at. Entering Iowa this weekend, I don't think it's really worth looking at it in any other aspect or maybe more or less than than what I've just stated there. That's where my head's at. Um Yet again, no, no big picks or anything. No, like, I just, like, why would I waste my time, <laughs> you know, having, especially at an unknown track? Like, this is the best time to, like, just start over. Clean slate. Don't enter with any, like, biases entering the race. Let's just see where you guys are at. And then, you know, build from there. Anyway, that's where I'm at. Maybe that helps. Maybe that maybe you get, maybe that gets you thinking on stuff. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, whatever. Those, that's my two cents. See you guys in live shows Saturday. And Sunday will probably be an afternoon live show since the race is at 7. Might go live around. Actually, I think I might just still go live early in the day and try and get more views and stuff. We'll, we'll test that out since we don't have a lot of Sunday night races. Uh, either way, I'll see you guys live shows this weekend. And, uh, yeah, best of luck. Bye-bye.